Welcome. Today I would like to talk about the last game which I played in this year's Belgian league. We played against a team of veteran and unfortunately we quite clearly lost the match. I played with black pieces against a young French player, Loïc Travadon. I have never seen him before, so I didn't really know what to expect. And uh, yeah, he already surprised me in the opening. So let's take a look at the game. He opened the game with a move e4. And I decided to go for um, e5 followed by knight c6. So no Philidor this time. Um, but uh, I go back to knight c6. Uh, I kind of expected uh, four knights because he played that sometimes. Um, so I partially prepared for him. And uh, yeah, here he already surprised me a little bit by playing this move um, bishop to c4. And we went for an Italian opening um, after the moves d3 and a6, we now uh, reach one of the main lines. So there are a lot of move order subtleties, and of course I cannot go into that during such a short video. Um, but let me say that in um, many cases these days, white plays castles relatively early and then sometimes plays with a4, for instance. Um, but uh, Luik did play differently. He played um, an old line with knight bd2, followed by bishop b3. And here he did not go for castles, but he went for this move h3. So h3 has the idea of um, playing knight f1 without any molestation by this knight g4 um, and actually delaying castles. So at this point I realized he will probably play this line which I have not looked uh, at in the last uh, 18 years I guess and I also had absolutely no games in this line. So here I already had to think a lot and uh, yeah this uh, led to a situation where I had a lot less time on the clock quite early on. I went for castles, knight f1, and uh, after some deliberation I played the move d5. I guess black has uh, other alternatives here, so for instance you could go for something like h6 or bishop e6 immediately for instance. Um, I, after h6 I was not entirely comfortable that uh, whether white maybe can even go g4 here followed by knight g3, so this looked quite dangerous to me, so I didn't want to play h6 and I think that's probably also correct. But bishop e6 is definitely a playable alternative. In any case, I went for d5. And now uh, he played uh, queen to e2. Again, same story. If I go h6 here, he will probably again go g4. So that's uh, not what I wanted. And again, I could go for this uh, move bishop to e6. But in this position, I really didn't like the move knight to g5. Yeah. Um, the computer says this is not really a big problem. <laughs> Black can just go bishop d7. But of course, if you have not seen this position, it's not clear to you that uh, black has actually enough counterplay in, uh, after the sequence. So instead, after queen e2, I went for a sequence where I thought, okay, I will get a slightly worse position, but maybe it's not it's not too bad. Namely, I just took on e4, which I knew was not the most principled move, but I thought, okay, takes, takes, bishop e6, and yeah, I will get a slightly worse position after, let's say, takes, takes. Um, something like bishop e3 and maybe takes now either knight or queen takes and maybe queen e7 at least now this pawn guards uh, f5 and yes of course white is uh, white is better here but uh, maybe it's not so much so that's what my, what was at least was what I thought um, objectively probably this position is also really not not good for black um, so instead I went for the move bishop to e6 Oh, sorry, bishop e6, he went for the move knight to g3, and he didn't take on e6. So um, here I probably should take on b3 and play something like queen to d7, queen to e6. And then again white is slightly better, but it's uh, definitely just a normal playable position. I played queen e7, maybe that's also not, not too bad, so he went uh, bishop c2. And um, yeah, I was thinking about uh, something like h6, but then I thought, okay, white can castle. So let's say h6 castles. And now white's play is quite easy. White will go knight h4, knight f5, and it's not so easy for black to create counterplay. Uh, the computer wants to go for something very direct, like queen c5 now with this idea, and says black is actually doing fine. But um, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't too sure about that. So instead. I played a move um, which might be slightly surprising, the move knight to e8, intending to go to d6 and to answer knight f5 with um, 
potentially with queen f6, depending on the position. He went for knight g5. And I went back to d7. So probably here as well, I should go for this move knight to d6. When after takes takes, white is somewhat better, but both according to the computer and my, some of my teammates uh, after the game, they said these kind of positions are actually, uh, maybe something like bishop b3, these kind of positions are actually playable for black. Of course, it's not uh, the perfect outcome that you want from the opening, but probably I should have settled for that. Instead, I played bishop to d7 and he went for knight to f5, attacking my queen. The point is, if I take, uh, he can take back and so if he gets this knight to e4, then actually he has this pair of bishops, even if I exchange on, on e4 at some point, so let's say some line like maybe castles, h6, this, even if I exchange there, then either he will get this super strong bishop on e4 or even the queen with the threat of f6 and white is almost winning here. So after knight f4, I had to settle for something more modest. I played the move queen to f6. And actually, it turns out that we're still following an old game um, between uh, Peter Sweetler with the black pieces and David Howell with the white pieces. And here in the game, David Howell played this move h4. I'm not, a, not sure if my opponent knew the game um, because he was still playing relatively quickly. But um, he played a much stronger move than this uh, h4 move played by Howell. Namely, he played this move knight to f3. And now that my knight is on e8 and pieces are really not well coordinated, I cannot really afford to take on f5. So I went for um, knight to d6. But now white gets a lot of time. So white gets this tempo. Go here. White gets another tempo. And I have to go back. And at first glance, I thought maybe it's not as bad as it seems. Um, but actually, the way my opponent plays is, is very, uh, very strong and very logical. So he just took on d6 and now played against this weakness on d6. So rook d1 attacking this guy. Yeah, and here again, I took way too much time. I thought about um, sacrificing this pawn now with knight to a5. And I calculated some line like this. So for instance, takes, maybe takes, takes, bishop b5, I thought maybe something like c4, bishop c6. And yes, white is a pawn up, but I have uh, quite a bit of counterplay. So I thought maybe this is not so bad. Um, but then I realized after knight a5, you can also just go bishop d5. And uh, I have not really solved any of my problems. So in the end, I settled for this very ugly looking move, bishop to b8, protecting the guy on d6. And during the game, I actually thought my position is worse, but it's not super bad. But after the next move, I realized the position is actually quite a bit worse than what I thought. And yeah, maybe you can pause the video and you can try to find a strong move here for white. Yeah, so my opponent realized the um, this guy is extremely weak. So um, if I lose this bishop on d7, my white squares will become super awful. This is the last protector of the white squares. So what he did is trying to eliminate this guy by playing the move knight to h4. Very, very strong move with the idea of going uh, knight to f5. Okay, I went knight to e7, trying to prevent that. And now his follow-up is very strong and very logical. Um, castles first, and now just taking on e7. Yeah, And uh, now just knight f5. Very well played against the white squares. Um, and yeah, here I underestimated the position a little bit after bishop takes, so I took now. But I should definitely do something else. I should definitely go for this queen to d7. Um, and yeah, then of course the position is much worse. It's um, actually this knight is very strong. If these bishops exchange at some point, then uh, yeah, d6 is going to fall eventually. And yeah, of course the position is uh, clearly better for white, but um, maybe not as easily winning as what I gave him in the game. Namely, after knight f5, I took on f5, he took back. Yeah, and now my white squares are just uh, just a complete mess. I mean, I have no piece which defends these white squares anymore. 
um, and I have zero counter attack. So as a general rule of thumb here, um, if you have these positions where you just have one pair of bishops left and these bishops are of opposite color, then whoever is the attacking side has a huge advantage. Now, so the fact that you have bishops of opposite color does not mean that the position is close to drawn, but it means if you still have major pieces on the board, that the position uh, is very, very good for the uh, person who attacks. So, um, yeah, let's see how he um, proceeded. Queen four, and now just rook to d3. I thought, okay, he's going to double, and I was extremely low on time already here on move 27. And uh, for that reason, I now fell also for a tactical trap. I should go for this uh, rook to d7 here. Um, but instead, I played the move bishop c5, which now gives him a very nice tactical option. So maybe again, you can pause the video and you can find the best move for white here. Yeah. He played the move f6. Gf is something which I really don't want to do. Yeah? So he's going to attack me, bishop uh, c2, rook g3, and he's going to eventually mate me. So I didn't like that. Uh, kind of have to take with the queen, but now rook to f3 hits the queen and hits the pawn on f7, and black is completely busted. I try to fight on for a few moves, king to h8, and now he just took on b7. So actually, again, during the game, I realized that I was probably lost, but I thought it's maybe not super direct, but yeah, it turns out um, that's just extremely unpleasant to defend. And yeah, here I probably made the last mistake. Um, I should have gone g6 to at least keep the queen flexible. Instead, I put the queen here. Now the queen is also tied uh, to this pawn. And um, yeah, white is just completely winning. Let's see how he converted. He played with the move b4. Rook f7, another strong move. Um, if I take, he can just take on a8. Yeah, and now, much too late, I finally um, play the move g6. And uh, yeah, now d6 falls. I can't do anything about it because if I move this rook, my bishop hangs. So, but here, of course, he can just take. So it's completely over. Went for queen f4, trying to at least exchange material with the hope of ending in a, um, an endgame where we just have bishops left. Of course, this is the world of make-believe and um, he could just take and that's what he did. Rook d1 and yeah, I can basically resign. This pawn is falling. I played on for a few more moves. Lost another one. And of course, his rooks are also much stronger than mine. His king is safer than mine. And I'm just three pawns down. But it took me some time to come to terms with it. And I only uh, resigned when he played this move. Bishop to c2, which now hints at bishop to b3. And he's going to um, mate this black king. Well, this was, of course, a very, very disappointing end of the season for me and also for the team. We played quite well for the first part of the season and in the second part of the season we played horribly. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, in this game I really didn't have that much of a chance. I um, got into an opening line which I really didn't know anything about and which he seemed to have dialed out. I mean, he played this novelty with uh, knight back to f3. Maybe he had even analyzed it, I don't know. Um, and afterwards, my position was bad. I didn't fight back in a very decent way, and he played the game overall extremely well. So um, I checked with uh, the chess.com tool, and he was at 96% uh, of 96.2% of accuracy, which is extremely high. Um, so yeah, props to him for playing a very good game, being well prepared, having dug out a very old line, which apparently he um, realized that I would probably not know. Um, so, end to a kind of an okay season where I missed a lot of chances, and now ending it on a on a negative note is never is never nice. Um, but at the same time, I have the feeling that uh, this year overall, at least in terms of openings, I did quite okay besides this very game. Um, so I have high hopes that my results could be better again next year. Well, um, yeah, that's it for me for today. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.